The state of Florida is known for many things, such as famous beaches, Disney World, alligators, oranges, the Florida man meme, and more. There is, however, a side to the state that is widely unknown to most people. It is one of deep and dark wilderness areas that butt up against the ever-growing human settlements. I mean, I think the swamp is the perfect setting, you know, to host these stories of an undiscovered creature of various sorts. You know, obviously Florida is known for the skunk ape, and once you come out to these environments, you know, you, you almost envision seeing something primordial you know the, it's just uh, something about the brackish waters the the dwarf palmettos the cypress the spanish moss it, it just evokes that sort of sense of mystery One of these wild areas in Florida is the Green Swamp in central Florida, just northeast of Tampa. The Green Swamp is a very large area. It's, uh, parts of it has probably not even been, never been investigated by anybody. Uh, there's a river called the Withlacoochee River that travels through most of the Green Swamp. Animals have got to have water, and this is the main source of water through the Green Swamp, except for the swamp itself. And uh, I believe if you stick to the, uh, the Willacoochee River, that's just going to be your best chances to uh, see wildlife. You, you know, you can get lost in two miles wide and you can be, I even talked to a ranger the other day and on this river someone went from one stop to another stop of two miles and they left at 7 a.m. They got picked up 7 a.m. the next morning because when this river's high, you can't tell if you're not trained and you know to look at the flow you can get into a tributary or a creek and think you're on the river and you're not and next thing you know you're twisted up and you know you're it turns into a rescue situation well the screen swamp is actually one of the biggest uh, water sheds here in florida other than the up in ocala as a legend tripper every legend out there you know green swamp has it you know the, the, the skunk cape We've got missing people. There's actually a legend of a, a payroll, a plane that went down with the payroll that still hasn't been found. There's numerous areas that you know have had you know reported paranormal activity. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, a good area, you know, that has everything if you're into that whole uh, you know looking at legends and stuff. Among these legends and stories in the Green Swamp, the swamp itself has been the site of tragedy and crime as well. One particularly gruesome story is that of the Stewart Homestead Axe Murders, where in 1918, the Stewart couple was brutally murdered by two young men at their homestead site in the Green Swamp. One of the young men was their grandson, and their bodies were left there for over a week until they were discovered. The site of the homestead is still standing, and folks that visit the area have reported strange activity. Perhaps unsurprisingly is that the Green Swamp has also been a hub for strange cult activity. People venturing into the swamp have reported running into satanic rituals taking place, as well as robed individuals wandering the woods. As is often the case with these rural areas in close proximity to population centers, they become a bastion for illegal activities. As a result, there have been stories of outlaws hiding out in the Green Swamp as well as murders taking place in its remote corners. Most prolifically in the Green Swamp, however, are those of skunk ape and Sasquatch stories. You know, the sightings of the uh, Florida skunk ape go back for, I mean, the Seminoles. They even of the Boy Scouts have a wilderness camp located back here called Bigfoot Wilderness Camp. And I talked to the uh, gentlemen out there that run it, and they said it's because when they were setting it up, they were talking to some of the Native Americans in the area, and they reported that the animal is, makes its home back here. You know, as a you know, legend tripper and a Bigfoot hunter, this is like one of the prime areas that I you know, come to. And it doesn't seem like you go very long without somebody seeing something. You know, I mean, I grant you maybe just a howl or somebody sees something you know, running across the road, but you know, there's always something going on around here in the Green Swamp. This was probably four or five years ago. 
uh, there was a guy, a, a hunter, he, he put down a hog, pretty good sized hog, and he got down off his stand. By the time he got to it, he was coming down the trail, and uh, as he walked up, he seen a big, large, brown creature walking away with his hog across his shoulder. The way he talked and the way he described the situation, I, I believe what he described actually happened to him. Florida obviously uh, has more swamps than most any place. So naturally, uh, these environments provide a rugged habitat, a place where there's plenty of food and water, uh, something that could support a large creature. And you know, perhaps not coincidentally, that's where we're getting a lot of reports. And you know, if you look at the history of Bigfoot reports over the years, Florida is way up there. I mean, you kind of think of this as a something pertaining to the Pacific Northwest, but Florida competes very well with the numbers of sightings. And I think that uh, these environments are in just a perfect place. After spending some time in the Florida Everglades for our previous Beyond the Trail expedition, we ventured into the Green Swamp to meet with some local researchers and check out the area for the next few days. quite a bit yeah. came back the river comes up it button hooks right there it goes around that's a point and it goes back back and we got out and we walked all back through in there oh, beautiful. and that is like all oh, big down trees yeah wet you it's like when you walk and you can uh, uh it, it's just it's crazy back there because people that stay here in an unknown location sure. pe people that stay here um always talk about um you know, activity and, and yeah. Ron has had activity here. Sure. Activity of what? We don't know. Right, right. But um, after seeing the other side, using the kayaks to get across. Kind of makes sense. It makes sense because over there is, we really liked it. So we're thinking about um, just going out on the river one night, half mile down or whatever, and just kind of river set or yeah, pull cool. in. And I have my uh, 180 blind. Have you all seen this? That's that pretty awesome. Neat. It's <laughs> actually a 270. Look at this. This is crazy. Just hop right in there. <laughs> no, but look, look at this. Here. Oh yeah, look at that. Do they, these are all sliding windows. They make no noise, there's no Velcro, they slide. Um, yeah, that's it's sweet. So that's my new addition into tech. Right on. <laughs> Oh, like, this is a, this is a gnarly spot. I mean, the drive-in was awesome. Cause three you, miles. Yeah. You got to realize we were just in the, you know, down in the big cypress. It's the forest. They're not really forests. They're those tree hammocks that they call them. Yeah. Know, the, so most of it is prairie, and then there's little patches of woods. So this is like a real forest. This oh is real God. woods. Oh, this is this is this, this is, is crazy wild, and especially, especially especially. Oh, I'm excited. There. We, so this it, was this was th you found this out there when you're kayaking. You're the rivers here are the ground. So it was about this high. I went around it, I think, and Ron was coming right at it and he's holding it up. He goes, hey, did you see this? And I went, what? And I turned around and he holds up this one. And I went, oh, hell no. <laughs> Just take a moment to appreciate this. You got yeah, it was built. little, yeah, this is obviously 100% clearly intentionally built. By what? That's the question. But that is, that's some Blair Witch type stuff Dude. there. <laughs> it's, yeah. But it's almost like two perfectly tridents re yeah, inverted. Really, yeah. <laughs> but this this up here is really really cool too. But I'm yeah, that's curious, some creepy yeah, crap. Not what you want to see yeah. when you're going down a small creek. <laughs> see, that's also that. another reason to carry in the woods because I, we have we've ran into Satanists in Oregon. Oh yeah, the mountains. oh they have here. Green Swamp is big on it. That's Seriously? what I was gonna say. We've ran, we've run into Satanists people out right in the here. woods. That's, yeah. that's why I'm not touching it. About weird I ain't touching that. <laughs> Oh, I don't think there's email. bad voodoo juju uh, with it, honestly. We were out, it was in Mountain You don't know what that means, dude. We were out there. Yeah, that but I don't, I'm not going to get bad voodoo juju from it. And, and I don't believe in superstitions. It doesn't matter. We went to a spot where there was you could really still get it, dude. Yeah, I'm not superstitious. Well, if you're pictured with it, you know. The guy had to use his fishing rod to I don't believe that. I'm not that superstitious kind of guy. All right, so we're here in the green swamp right now. Absolutely beautiful campsite. We're going to do some 
night kayaking through this area. There's been a lot of reports over the years from this area. We're here with Matt and a bunch of other researchers who kind of know this area. They hit this spot up a bit. You could see from the drive in, I mean, it's just, it's really, this is a completely different environment from big cypress that we were in. These are, these are woods, not just the, the tree hammocks. These are real woods. Uh, we're going to get geared up, do some night kayaking, and then keep hitting up this spot and keep hearing the stories from these guys. So should be an interesting spot to be in. I have bad feelings about this. About what? Kayak <laughs> flipping and the cameras get ruined and we're totally <laughs> screwed. Are you on the land crew or the water crew? I'm on the land crew. Oh, dude, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> getting in the water with alligators. <laughs> I don't care if I'm in a kayak at night. Not at night, I'll do it in the day, but not at night. This, this button here. Is we're about to head out a little bit on the uh, on the water here. What's yeah. the idea behind this? I mean, you, you're out here a lot, right? Yeah, but it's only my second time with the kayaks, but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna enjoy it. Ron here. Um, uh, not tonight. What's going on? No, this is a piece of wood this big. Wasn't a piece of wood. It's a gator head. And he just just sunk right down. And I said, this. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, night's their time to be out. I guess it just really comes down to the size of your cojones. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. I'm gonna Dave's listen to this guy. It. Well, he he's been here more than I, which is the reason why I'm Fair here enough. with Ron. Um, yeah. He's he's uh, showing me the way of the woods. So let's say. All right, so we're amending our plan. We're not heading out in the kayaks tonight. There was a gator. massive gator that was spotted in the water that did not seem afraid of the kayaks at all. So we're gonna wait till we try it in the daytime before we attempt a night kayak session here. So we're gonna do some night walking around here. I mean, the drive in was pretty long, so there's plenty of space to walk around here. We're gonna do two teams. Tate, you're going with, with, uh, uh, with Matt and guys. Joey. We're Matt gonna hit Joey. the road. We're gonna go with Ron, Eli, and I, and uh, yeah, let's see what uh, what happens. And, and we'll, just have uh, a good time. Stay safe, everyone. Can make let's sure we're uh, on the walkies together. Okay, um, yeah, let's do a check here. Tate, 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 can you hear me? I do, got ya. All right, sounds good. We are good to go. Scout on the Sitting in the back of the truck with the therm, just beautiful visibility. Yeah. Got on the white hot. Hey, yeah, uh, we just got to our spot. We're gonna head in, so I'm gonna turn the volume down on this thing. Beautiful. And we're not seeing any gator slides here. Well, it really opens up over here. Yeah, it's a pretty wide section of the river. Yeah, I don't see any gators out here. This place is pretty cool. Yeah. It's neat every now and then to open it up like that. Okay, so what are we doing out here, guys? We got Alex, Eli, and Ron up there going uh, off trail. And then we got myself, Joey, and then you, Matt, we're walking the road trying to make some knocks and see if we can get something stirred up here. I've never seen Ron um, bail on a kayak trip or any trip like that. No. That no, that, that had to have been big. pretty serious. Because that's unlike him. Yeah, if there's a gator that big. Well, well, he that shouldn't throw him, but... Well, the thing about it was that he said it just dropped down. Right. Instead of hauling ass. Yeah. Drop down, that, that's that not means, good. Yeah. Whoop!
I say let's sit here another few minutes. See see what these owls get stirred up. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes you hear something mixed in with them. You know. Some of the coolest birds. You know what's crazy about squatching in Florida is it's it's like your own this place is its own world. Yeah. Being in like you know like even Ohio or something like that, you're not gonna hear the animals you're gonna hear here. There's so much more you have to really pay attention to because you can be easily fooled if you don't know what you're listening to. And that's when you get those people who are like, oh, I heard this. Yeah. When really it was just a bird. Of them, the third one just walked off. Maybe some raccoons. So. They're pretty tiny, whatever they are. You see the eye shot on camera at all yet? Mm, no. Hold on, maybe. And it's just, it, it's, yeah, it wa that's cool. yeah, they just yeah, walked you, away. You can see it in just a little bit. There's one and two, and the third one walked off. Oh, yeah. I see. Oh, yeah, I saw two of them. Yeah. I got them on film, so got them on the therm either way. You imagine your wife had had a sighting out here? No, my wife had a sighting, a road crossing. I was right next to the turnpike, right on Route 19, next to the turnpike north of Groveland. Huh. She was coming south, and back then there was nothing built up in that area. And going north, you go right into Lake Apopka. Oh, okay. Or going south, you went into Lake Apopka. Yeah, but, I mean, she's driving down the road and come out from underneath the, the billboards down there, across the road, and up into the bush. Wow. And she said it was only like three steps of boom, 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 gone. The way she described it, it was like a well-toned, very hairy athlete. Those are so cute. Check this out, you know. Yeah, those are those big. Straight up stalactites in a cave or something. That reminds me of. Did you hear that? Oh, it's a deer. That's cool. You see it good? Yeah. He's just, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's just chilling. He, he's just under the branch, right? Yep. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Looking the other way. Oh, yeah. Great. That's cool. Okay, well, that's good news. Look at that. Yeah, we're just uh, kind of walking around. We've seen a couple little critters here. It's a pretty cool area. How's it going for you? Low voltage. Hey, so my battery's about to die on my Bofang, so I'll catch you later. Alright, we're just heading back to camp now. Uh, just did a little night walk around. Didn't do any knocks or anything. Just kind of checked out the area, scoped out. Had Ron tell us some stories, some some things that he saw. We have some fun stories about being out here in the swamp. He's out here a lot. So yeah, now we're on our way back. Maybe rendezvous with uh, Tate and the others and kind of see if they've experienced anything. I think they did more. I think they did some knocks and stuff, but we'll see. Yeah, I think so too. I heard something out here. Yeah, it was a possum.
What happened? Nothing much. Quiet night. Uh, Seen a deer. Yeah, I filmed a deer on the thermal tonight, so that was really cool. And then possibly saw a possum walking off. So, other than that, quiet. A lot of barred owls. That's the chicken. Okay, what is the carne asada? That's the beef. Okay, let me get two carne asada tacos. So we're out here, it's morning, pretty uneventful night. Good time though, having fun out here. But then you wake up to this kind of an area. Absolutely beautiful, it's like, it's almost jungle-like in here. These palmettos, absolutely so cool. As we hung around camp that morning, we listened to stories about experiences in the green swamp, as well as various research approaches. I have been on the river uh, uh, just before uh, dark, and I heard what sounded like an owl, but it, it, it had a different sound to it. It's, it actually sounded like a man imitating an owl. So it made its call, I called back, Within 15, 20 seconds, they had cut the distance in half from where I first heard the call. Okay, uh, it made another call, I called again, and before I know it, it's like 20, 30 yards away. It's very close. And, this time, and it's getting dark right then. Actually, it is dark. I'm sitting right next to my car. And all of a sudden, I start getting pelted. Uh, not large rocks or anything, just pebbles. And I was getting pelted with them, quite a few. And uh, needless to say, I got in my car and took off. Well, when I first started, I, I, I just looked to see when you all arrived, because you had mentioned possibly doing this interview, I looked and I had been doing this two years. So what was interesting is I had knee surgery. I was laid up for five weeks. I'm watching all the Bigfoot channels, going back to a childhood you know, fascination with Stonehenge. And like you, Loch Ness was my big thing. You know, one channel just mentioned, you just gotta get off the couch and go look for yourself. And I went, well, they're all in the Pacific Northwest. Well, everybody says. And so I went out in Florida and, and started going around and I was totally surprised. I, living here my whole life, it never meant anything to me. But when you get on these roads, even 275, I-75, 301, whatever, it's just woodlands after woodlands of preserves and state parks and the more you get out into these parks like the river behind me and my new strategy is kayak remote places no more trails just pushing back even if it's not too far and i'm finding areas that i think are really high profile areas which i call choke points and we have a about a 38 mile stretch from hillsborough county all the way out to dade city so i'm following those choke points the more i see to make it longer the more you believe there's something easily could move through this area. One day I went out and what did I do? It's what a lot of people do. They emulate what they see. So I took my iPhone and I went out tromping through the woods with an iPhone. And I went, what are you doing? You work for a TV station, you have high end gear. So I ended up going with a camera that really nobody loves. It's a Panasonic Lumix 2500, but it's a 28 to 500 zoom, non-removable lens. But when, it, when the lens turns on, it, it, it goes out and it stays out. It doesn't matter if you go to 38 to 500 within that range, it's going to stay in there. The beauty of that, and I researched it, it allows it to ride on a gimbal at full focal length. So I can do the behind the camera where everybody else does it with a GoPro. I can turn that Lumix on, ride it on my shoulder on a gimbal at 300 millimeters and be steady. That's looking down the trail over 100 yards. I'm two years into it. I, I don't really go by people with 10 to 20 years into it telling me how to do it because what have they done? So I just come at it with my, with my TV gear that I use in work. So it's just really what hike are you doing at what particular time and what equipment is the best instead of just always shooting with an iPhone 
and without a gimbal and just giving yourself a bad chance to succeed because you want to kind of be ready. You have two, three seconds if something happens. So my camera's either forward, backwards. Um, if I'm looking at tracks, my camera's out. And that's how I up the game. I just think of all the times I've heard people say, oh, my camera is in my pocket. It's like, well, that's your fault. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so right. I just try to do it, you know. This is act that's actually an island right there. I remember we went out there and we That's where they're getting ready to go. We put two guys out there one night because <laughs> we were over here and uh, doing some data dumping. Unfortunately, really? unfortunately I'll be a lot honest. No, we didn't get anything that night, but I'll tell you what though, we had uh went oh. out with Nick and them, we went uh, the other night, uh Saturday night, Matt, we went over on the um Florida trail on the other side. Yeah. And something came on the thermal and then took off running in the woods. You know, you know, two times it came out. And uh, it, the guy who was with us said, you know, he had a sighting years ago. some kind of little is this technically an island pretty much yeah yeah so we're on an island right now in the little coochie river area this is across from where we're camping this island so pretty cool to be here. i believe that is that that would be hard right yeah i mean got the little hooves yeah that's yeah, there you go there's hog that's cool and they stick their nostrils kind of and dig, and that's what they do. Yep. Their little snout. <laughs> As we moved further into the bush, the true nature of how lush this area is became quite clear, as well as how difficult of an area it is to operate in. Given the water level is much higher year-round, this is a small window of time where it's relatively low. Something could definitely live in here. Look at that. Look at that deep there. Oh, that's the deer. Here's a really good. I'm assuming that looks like deer. Yep. Yeah, this, yeah, this is deer right here. There's another one there. I don't think so. Wait, maybe it did. What are we looking at? It's like a... That straight brown thing up in the middle of the road. It did move. It's going to the left now. Oh yeah, what the heck? Let me see it. 
Here. See that brown thing? Yeah. But it is moving, dude. What the? Here, you want to hold it? Or? No, no, it's good. Well, it's standing still now, but it did move. Trying to see if this thing's going to move. Whatever it is in there. Well, we just got tricked. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's interesting. I didn't really see a movement, but you guys both swore that you saw something move, so. The, I think I caught some of the movement on camera. Yeah, we'll check it out. Maybe there was something back there that moved. It's definitely moving. I think it's a dog. Hog. It's a hog? Seem digging around too. Looks like a mama. Hey Piggy, you deaf? There you go. <laughs> I know. Yeah. You guys were right. No. Yeah. You guys were right. You saw something move behind whatever this 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 palmetto. Oh, look, look, look. Two, two more. Yeah. There they go. White what ring on it too. Yeah. You see that? Some uh, some baby back ribs. <laughs> dude, get some of that pulled pork from yesterday. We, we should get some Willie Jewels again, dude. Dude, that place is bomb, right? Just don't break your leg out here. Yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Both of us might be able to drag you back, <laughs> but you will be screaming. They're really on there, man. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, I don't know if she's right. We have found some out here before that are sweeter as hell. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh God. The juice. Oh. the juice ain't bad. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's way too sour. Mm. Okay, now how do we get out of here? It's still pretty tart. <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. It's not as bad, but it's still not still great. Still not sweet. We'll, get, <laughs> we'll buy some roadside ones when we go up to Ocala. I know a spot to get some roadside oranges. That's cool, though. Look at that. I know. It looks like it's been used several times. Look at the, the, the how it's been fucking different fucking stuff. Yeah. If you want to just take a little snooze fest right here. Hey, it could be that, too. I found a grapefruit on that tree and I knocked it down with like some piece of uh, one of those, whatever they're called. Not important, just cut it. Still using it? <laughs> no. I haven't used it yet. Does it just collapse? Yeah. Oh, look at that. I hope this is sweet. Well, that's probably got to over here. Who's going to try first? I'm not actually eating it. Oh, dude. Look at that juice. Oh, that's not bad. No, now I'm good? used to it. I wouldn't say it's good. <laughs> Fair enough. We could have been making margaritas the whole time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Shortly before our trip to Florida, we learned that the Great Florida Bigfoot Conference was taking place at the same time we would be in the Green Swamp. Being that the conference was in Lakeland, Florida, which is not far from the Green Swamp, we figured it would be interesting to attend and document the conference, especially from the cultural perspective of the Bigfoot phenomenon.
information. Well, I think these conferences are great places for people to meet like-minded individuals. You know, when you're, when you're a Bigfoot researcher and or you express interest in this subject, you know, you're, you're among people who are serious about this pursuit or are interested enough to go out and, and go to a conference to learn. And so it's a great way to, to share information uh, to meet people, you know, a lot of, I'm sure a lot of these groups get new members by, you know, meeting people at conferences. You can learn a lot of things, you know, there's, there's presentations uh, on a variety of aspects of this study and if you're just getting into it, this is sort of a perfect crash course. What I like about conference in general, it brings out witnesses, you know. A lot of time people have seen something they never really told anybody, they've never gone online and, and reported it to BRFO. I mean, like I said, I end up finding out there's more sightings and, you know, all over the place, like, in the, like here in the Green Swamp that I didn't know about. And, uh, and then kind of validate some of what these people are seeing so they don't feel crazy, okay? I'm not the only one who's seen this. Anytime I go and speak at one of these conferences, I really try to localize it somewhat because that's where people are and that's where they're going to go into the woods. So that may be naysayers and say, well, I'm in the woods, you're over here at this conference. But I think it takes both because many of the encounters or witnesses I've come across, I've met at some of these conferences. Yes, I found this at Bear Island uh, about two and a half months ago. Uh, it was just on a two track trail roadway. It's uh, kind of unusual. We're not used to anything quite like this. And we're thinking that it's, uh, it's the four-toed skunk ape variety of the Bigfoot. And uh, the argument will probably go on for some time. So some think it is, some think it isn't. But what we're learning is that there's a huge variety of four-toed skunk apes. I did a video on that. And we don't know enough about them yet, but this is one of the many types of tracks. That you think it maybe could be like one individual that has a deformation, or is it maybe because of birth defects? Or that, like until I find the second one, I'm not gonna know that, but we have thought of that. This, this may be a, a deformation, and maybe that's the norm. Maybe they're uh, mid-tarsal break is farther forward. We, we really haven't any idea. In 10 years, this is the first one I've found. Right, and again, you said this was November of 2021, right? Yes, November of 2021, pretty fresh. Out and you've been out in the big Bill, Cypress area been. for quite a while, right? For uh, over 10 years, yeah. Over 10 years, and in that time, you're mentioning you've seen panthers and that sort of I, stuff? I've seen panthers, uh, hogs, of course, a lot of deer. Uh, this was the first print, actual print I found. Uh, and there's been some good uh, sightings in there of the skunk apes, in fact, uh, maybe 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. And, and along that Highway 29, too, there's there's been some uh, sightings in there. There's some thick areas in there. It's tough to get into. Extremely thick. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty Another tough to get through with a machete on some of them. After the conference, we headed back into the green swamp for one final night. Really dark night because it was raining, so... Yeah, it is no moonlight tonight at all. So we're, we're, I'm feeling optimistic about tonight, so we're going to try some knocks and... Probably just, gonna settle in soon, but might as well give some stuff a try. Right. Yeah, see what happens. Right. So here it goes. Here goes nothing. Much better. You have rough audio. Shh. All right. Well, you guys want to call it? Yeah. Yeah, we're calling it a. I'm gonna Thanks for watching. <laughs> have the audio rolling right here. I'm gonna run my car for a few minutes. Okay. I'm starting the audio, so that's rolling. Make sure to remind me in the morning to get it. Right.
morning here. <clears throat> Not a whole lot. I mean, there was some interesting noises last night. I was woken up by something crashing through the trees. I came out, it started raining, so I came out to get my audio recorder and I saw a raccoon in one of these trees up here just climbing around. Right as I was getting the camera to film him, he was gone, but he was there for a few minutes. And it was when I went for the camera that he left. But the, the vibes are definitely spookier here than when it was a bigger group of us. Well, aside from that, we're taking off today. It's cool to come back to this spot. Definitely spookier vibes. A little cloudy and pretty cold. I mean, for Florida, not cold for cold weather areas, but it's been the high 30s here tonight, so. So what'd you guys think of this area? I thought it was good. It kind of reminded me of uh, Laos Camp a little bit. Yeah, it really did. It has that camp had some Laos Camp vibes. What do you think, you like? Yeah, I think it's an incredibly dense. Like, I don't know. I think it's maybe the trees that the Everglades didn't have that makes it feel more so. But yeah, it's hard to get around. It's crazy because you're only like 45 minutes from downtown Tampa, basically here. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which is hard to believe. So what you have in Florida is you're out here in the summer if you do come out you can probably push it a couple hours especially if you're taking a day pack so heat heat is the challenge um, you have to um, you know drink your fluids you have to be ready it, it, it's just absolutely brutal in the summer which is why i try to limit my uh, time in the field in the summertime because it's just it's just undoable just about the biggest months for getting into the field in the green swamp is uh, February, March, and April, because that's after, right at the end of uh, gun season, hunting season. The creatures obviously know when the shooting stops, hunting season is over, and it's still cool, cold sometimes, and I believe that's when they uh, actually tend to get in, into the woods more, where they can be visible to uh, humans. A lot of credible witnesses have seen something out of here, and I think it warrants more research and a continued persistence to, you know, try and prove that there is something unique here, like the skunk ape. And I think if there, if there was a place on Earth uh, that could support a creature like this, this is one of those places. It's, it's at the top of my list. I love to come here. I love to get out here in the woods and the swamps and take a look around because I think uh, one of these days somebody's going to get that proof uh, everybody's looking for. Although it felt like a quick tease being in the green swamp for such a short time, the area was quite stunning and clearly supports a wide range of wildlife and is filled with food sources year round, but is also very difficult for us as humans to really explore with ease especially during the months with extreme humidity. Hats off to researchers like Matt, Robert, Joey, Ron, and the countless others who trek into these wild woodlands in search of the green swamp Sasquatch. <laughs>